Okay, so I've managed to screw this thing together pretty well. Please be forgiving, you expert carpenters. I am definitely an amateur. Perhaps one day I'll have the good fortune to actually learn how to do carpentry. But for now, we're just um, doing the best we can. And I've screwed in all the holes, all the screws. I put the panels in. I put the extra extension panels in and I've filled in the um, countersinking with these rather nice little wooden buttons just to make everything copacetic, aesthetically pleasing and to finish the job off right. So that was the last one in there, a little bit of glue on the wood, pop it in and that's good. I'm going to flip this upside down and show the, to you the right way up. Here's the trough of the hive. I'm now going to varnish it. And we varnish our hives with propolis mixed with grain alcohol. We use Everclear and propolis I use a refined propolis, which I get from Draper B, and it's, um, what does it look like? Well, when you can get it out of here, looks like solid lumps of brown stuff. It's actually all it is, solid lumps, brown, it smells gorgeous. But when you put it in the grain alcohol, of course, it dissolves into a fine varnish. Now, while I'm doing this, I want to talk a little bit about the biodynamic thought here. And of course, biodynamic means to be engaged in a dynamic way with the actual biology that we're working with, of all of nature and its interdependent parts. So, we know that nothing is separate, nothing exists by itself without any relationship to anything else. Everything actually joins together somewhere, belongs together somewhere, is interdependent. And um, we take all of this into account when we're building the beehive, or hopefully anything to do with our care of the natural world and of course all of our world is natural so <laughs> we want to be thinking about these things. The propolis is a bee product. They make it by um, taking the sap of buds of trees or maybe even some tree barks and they masticate it and because they have such an incredible uh, glandular system inside the bee bodies, they um, form this stuff called propolis and it has some very high medicinal properties. It's antibacterial, it's antifungal and it's antiviral. So what they're really doing when they put propolis in the hive is they're providing themselves with an external immune system because every little tiny bee doesn't have one. Every little tiny bee is not actually a separate bee. It's part of the whole colony of bees and being a super organism we understand that a bee colony is actually one bee but unlike most creatures all the parts move independently of each other and so to our perception there's thousands of bees here but actually they're just moving parts of one bee and uh, that's an interesting thing to think about right there so i'm putting this propolis onto the wood rather than paint and two reasons here. One is, of course, is to be in a biodynamic relationship with a bee, with one bee. 
and also because uh, paint doesn't let wood breathe it smothers it and we want our wood to breathe and we want uh, as natural an environment as we could possibly offer in a natural wild state bees would nest inside a hollow tree so this trough tries to imitate that I guess the tree fell down in a sense because it's not upright but nevertheless we give them wood and we prepare it for them with propolis one of the things you might be wondering about is where are the bees going to get in and that's a good question they're going to come in here what we see is when we made this panel upside down and then we put on this addition on what is now the front of the hive we put in an entrance and I simply take a little hand saw and um, you know maybe you want to find a better way to do this but this is what I do and I just cut into the wood you know before I put it up here and then I cut and I cut and I cut and I cut and then I just take my hammer and chisel chisel that out and then I take my um, Swiss Army knife and smooth it out so it's nice and smooth this is about five sixteenths of an inch high which is called a bee space as a, a well-known dimension within the beehive and that's their main entrance now I'm putting it in the middle here I have sometimes put it down this end but at the advice of my mentor um, I'm putting it in the middle because he feels like perhaps it's too far away to guard the entrance when these bees are in a cold environment in the winter and it would be easier for them to be closer to the cluster overwintering to guard the entrance. Um, of course you could put up a little mouse excluder if you needed to in the winter in the cold climates. Here in California um, our bees actually don't really go into hibernation because it rarely gets cold enough. Um, but either way, um, I like this central entrance. It's very reminiscent of the Zendo, which inspired this hive, the temple, uh, the Zen temple that I came from. So that's one thing. And then, of course, you've got to consider ventilation. And ventilation is very, very important. Um, perhaps the most energy inside a hive goes towards climate control. And the brood nest needs to be maintained at um, actually about the same temperature as human body. Very high temperature. And uh, about four-fifths of all the honey coming into a hive or the nectar that's made into honey that comes into a hive actually goes into um, feeding the worker bees inside the nest who are maintaining that temperature for the babies. There's a lot, a lot of energy goes into keeping this temperature steady, steady, and you've got to have good ventilation. To have good ventilation, you need to have ventilation holes. So I put a very unskillful hole here and a much more skillful hole here. They're actually the same dimensions, they're five eighths of an inch to be spaces and if the bees want them they'll keep them open and if for some reason they think they don't they'll simply close them up with propolis and open them up again later so they can control that and they actually will shorten this too in cold weather and put a propolis guard across some of it maybe a little tunnel in here but if you've got a central opening you've got what I call windows up here that's good and then around the back side here, which will become the side entrance, is this is actually just another ventilation hole. And we'll get back to that issue as I show you the rest of the hive. First, I'm going to finish doing the varnish.